All right, guys, just a summary of what we're doing here today. I've got my 459-503R Lee cast bullets, and I'm going to be shooting those with our new powder. So we've got golden powder, crimson powder, balsa, pucked powder, and screened willow powder. And uh, they're all 65 grains by weight. If you look by volume, the golden powder is probably the most dense. And everything else is pretty similar as far as density goes. So we're going to test this out in my CVA Acura. Now this gun with this bullet is the most accurate combination I have. So we're going to try to do some accuracy comparisons, some following comparisons, and uh, see what we come up with. So let's get her loaded and take our first shot. All right, you probably don't need to see me load it, but we're gonna do it anyway. At least this first round. So, here we go. We're gonna start with the golden powder first. So, there it is. And this will probably be the first video on YouTube of anyone shooting golden powder out of a firearm. I know it's been done in cartridges but I don't know if it's been done uh, in a muzzle loader we'll find out so we're gonna figure this all out real time I also picked this rifle because it's very strong so if something does go wrong oop, talking not thinking I like to put a wad on top of uh, the powder in this rifle so we're gonna do oh, and I have the 50 cal wads out Give me a second. I'll grab uh, the right wads and we'll, we'll start again. Alright guys, got the right wads. Yeah, you know my editing is non-existent. But uh, on top of the uh, powder, I like to put a felt wad that I have cut. help protect the base of that bullet not a lot of crunch this stuff uh, you can't really compress golden powder so now we're gonna get the bullet in there if you guys can see and my rammers kind of not ideal for this bullet but we'll see uh, how well it works And we're seated. So let's uh, cap it and take a shot. Alright guys, first ever shot with the golden powder. Off a uh, crummy plastic rest. So, we'll get it. it's not, not as good as a sandbag. But, good enough for what we're doing. First shot. Hopefully this rifle doesn't blow up. I was incredibly weak. <laughs> so golden powder may not be viable, but let's take a look here. Our initial speed was only 588 feet per second. And that shot went way low. I don't think it's gonna stabilize at this speed. I'll shoot one more just to see what the following is like, because that's the big promise behind this stuff, is uh, decreased following. Uh, the muzzle, it's hard to tell from here what's in there. But we'll shoot another one just for science. Uh, but I can already tell, at least the way I cook this batch, um, it's not going to be viable yet. But, more to come. I have to perfect this. Alright, second shot with the golden powder. You'll probably see the plume better than me. That's another thing I wanted you to observe is uh, what's going on with the smoke or lack thereof. So second shot, at least see if it'll kind of group or if it's just shot bending out the barrel. What 
felt a little more pop. I'll tell you, loading the, the second bullet, I didn't feel a lot of uh, resistance to loading, so I think fouling is very mild. Let's see, shot number two, 666. So yeah, a little more. I don't know if that's a bad omen. <laughs> we'll go down so you can see uh, the grouping or lack thereof. All right, so I was aiming here. First shot one here, second one here. It is cold bore, so maybe the second would be closer. But uh, interesting to note is the bullet did stabilize. It didn't go in sideways, so that's good. But uh, I'm pretty much unwilling to try to make that viable, at least with that batch. But it's not all lost because I made a batch of crimson powder. And if you remembered from my burn test, it was a lot more potent. So let's load that up next. All right, here, here's a spit patch. I put down the bore after two shots. Uh, it did feel a little crust ring where you'd normally feel it, uh, right where the bullet seats, but uh, not too bad. I'd say that's a little better than my screen powder, which is super filthy, but I was hoping it'd be a little better than that. Anyway, let's do some crimson powder. All right, guys. Let's do uh, some crimson here. So this was cooked the same way, but we've added some uh, iron oxide and some charcoal to it. So hopefully that's in frame. Same 65 by weight. Wad. It's unlubed wad. In case anyone cares, it's just a piece of felt. Now this stuff does have some crunch to it. Um, I suspect it's the carbon that is uh, fluffy and adding some crunch to it. So I noticed that right away. There's the golden powder you could not compress. Oh, pinched my finger. Get down. Nice and smooth. All right. I will uh, set up for a uh, shot and we'll see what happens. All right, time for the crimson powder. First shot. Certainly can't be any worse than that golden powder. But hey, at least it was a bullet down range. I mean, in a pinch, that's that's lethal, even at 500 or 600 feet per second. It's 500 grain bullet, so, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't want to, want to be shot by that. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> now we're talking, boys and girls. That one impacted more where I wanted it to. Let's look at the speed. Um, that felt pretty good. It's hard to tell with the glare. That was 918 feet per second. 918. So, we just about, well, not quite doubled our speed. Uh, let me take a few more shots and then we'll, we'll put a group together. All right, one more shot with the crimson powder, just because it's a unique substance. Now remember, this was made with no ball milling and no pucking, no dyes, none of that. Just cook, granulate, screen. That's it. Uh, not even the uh, carbon, my charcoal was milled. Oh, we're putting a group together, guys. <laughs> I'm going to do one more. I'm going to keep you, uh, I'll show you the speeds when I'm done. All right, my three shots were 918, 904, 898, with an average of 906. So that's probably 10% lower than my black powder, but 
I could easily add 10% more or I could try to maybe refine my charcoal a little better or, or do any number of things to improve this. This is literally my first try. So to be within 10% of something I've been working at for years uh, is pretty dang good. Uh, I'm very excited about the group through the scope. Let's walk down and see what it looks like. Alright guys, I could not ask for a better group. There's literally three holes there the size of my pointer fingernail. Three holes touching with crimson powder. This is 50 yards. You can see where I was shooting from back there. Um, yeah, it's a little different speed, so my point of impact uh, is a little bit up left, but hey, I can uh, adjust the scope. If this one was going to be my powder to be, I can tell you it was uh, easier loading than black powder, so there's definitely less fouling. I don't know if the patch will really show, but we're going to do the, um, the balsa next, and then maybe we'll go back to old reliable screen powder. With that is an absolute winner and I'm telling you if I had bags instead of that crappy hard flimsy uh, plastic rest that would probably be even smaller so that's a one hole gun with that particular bullet in my brand new crimson powder again no ball mill no stuff needed just a frying pan some water and a few chemicals and you can shoot this so you saw it here first, folks. Alright guys, here's the spit patch from the crimson barrel. Again, the patch doesn't tell the whole story, because uh, when I'm swabbing it, it feels very clean. Uh, again, I felt a little bit of a crud ring at the bottom, but not extreme. Um, definitely cleaner than black powder. It definitely has a unique smell, because this is a sulfur-free product. so. That may make it not corrosive. I mean, I'm still going to clean my barrel like I always do. But uh, definitely an improvement on all fronts. So, next up, we're going to do the balsa. This is puck powder. This is probably more powerful than my screened willow. So, I think we're going to have velocities above 1100. I'm predicting maybe 1300 with this, uh, which may throw the accuracy off. But we'll see, and I want to see if it's uh, clean. So maybe I'll put a few more patches down the barrel to get it uh, clean so I don't have previous contamination. Alright, balsa is in the gun. Now even if this stuff is the bee's knees, I don't think I'm going to make it because I can only fit a quarter pound in one of my uh, jars, my Harbor Freight ball mill jars. So most I can make is half pound at a time whereas normally I can make a full pound I can fit twice as much it's so fluffy it's really annoying to work with but for science we're going to send a few down range see if you can tell a difference in the flash oh that hits hard and uh I'll show you the initial velocity. I can tell you what, it wasn't hitting where I was aiming. Uh, oh, 1097, not that uh, high as I expected. But uh, let's do a few more, see how she groups. And uh, I always have better luck with screen powder for some reason than puck. But let's uh, see how we group it. All right, guys, speed for the balsa uh, average is 1083. And my shots were 1097, 1120, 1034. So obviously more than the other stuff, but uh, not too impressive grouping. This was the balsa patch, and it's noticeably dirtier. Uh, it's probably hard to tell on camera, but I can see more chunks on this one than the other two. So the balsa, it, it does feel cleaner than my screened willow in the uh, when I'm swabbing, but it is definitely more dirty than the black powder substitutes, the homemade version. Let's look at the group and we'll move on to old reliable. So here's the results of the balsa uh, pucked powder. Little vertical string that's maybe four inches. So 
far cry from the crimson that we had the one hole with. So let's go back to the screen. I wish I had my spray bottle. I would have flushed the barrel to get everything out. But uh, so there might be some cross contamination going on in there. But I'm going to clean it best I can at the bench. And then we're going to uh, try some screen powder and see if we can't. Because usually I can get pretty close to that with the screen powder. But to be honest, that's pretty dang good. So it's going to be hard to beat that with the setup. Let's see what happens. Hi guys, 65 grains of screened weeping willow. This has always been my uh, go-to powder for reliability, consistency, accuracy. It's dirty. It's really not that hard to make uh, because I'm not pressing. I am ball milling, but that's a set it and forget it step. And uh, I do consider the best powder to be the what I can get the best accuracy for. So some people on YouTube will say, well, this is faster, it's better. And this is slower, it's worse. Well, obviously, if, it, if it's not useful, if it's not as accurate, I don't care how fast it is. Um, I want to hit what I'm aiming at. So, let's uh, take a shot. Ah, nice familiar smell there. It looks like that was slow. That was around 811. So uh, we'll put a few more downrange and we'll uh, do the drill. All right, screened willow, average 897. My shots were 877, 917, 897. So compared to crimson, we are just a little teeny weeny bit faster. I mean, we were at high 800s here. High 800s here, we got mid 900s here. Um, the, the fastest was 918, and the fastest here was 917. So I'm thinking the speed is just about the same, even though it came out a little bit more for the crimson this time. I think if we did it 10 shots, of course I'd be here all day, uh, but we'd get a better average. And I think it's about the same speed, which is probably why we're getting about the same accuracy. So let's take a look at the uh, target. Here we are at the target and again I have three in one hole my finger fits through. And it almost looks like two shots but I think two went, well the third one went through the middle because there's no other place it could have possibly gone. There's no way a flyer could have been past, past that. So uh, screen like I said always reliable always good. Uh, the crimson surprised the heck out of me. Uh, I really wish the GP would have done better, the gold, uh, because the gold is easy enough where it's worth my while to change process. The crimson powder is not really worth it for me uh, since the screen doesn't require pressing and corning anyway, which is the most dangerous step. So if you're going to kill yourself, it's going to be when you're corning your powder. Uh, so avoiding that is uh, a big plus. So this is another way to do it. This is sulfur free. So if you're worried about corrosion, I'm not. I mean, I clean my gun so well, it, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but it's another process, another very good powder that works very good, black powder substitute. And I just proved today that it can be very, very accurate. It can do the job. And like I say, if you're just shooting at 20 yards at a piece of steel and getting speeds, you really can't judge how good that is. Because if I did that, I would declare balsa the best because at 25 yards that spread would have been cut in half and you wouldn't really notice on a big piece of steel especially if you're shooting offhand um, and you just say well that's the better speed well it's not the better powder because this is a true accuracy test as well as a velocity test so there you have it guys I'll see you next time